I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Saren's out there somewhere, and we're gonna find him. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. And periodically you'll be given the chance to just speak to the crew. And it's it's another, you know, Paragon, Neutral, or Renegade option. Uh, let's just tell people what's going on. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. Humanity must do its part. Eden, yeah, uh, Eden Prime was just the start. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. Um. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. Humanity needs to do this says Shepard, who has just made a Quarian friend, and a Turian friend, and a Krogan friend, and, a, and so on and so forth. The captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. Cool. More Paragon points. Look out the window, get some XP. Talk to Joker, maybe get some XP. Commander! Something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. <laughs> I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. You can kind of like, like Joker is clearly like, I don't want to say he's compensating. He is a cocky son of a bitch, but you can kind of take him down a peg here by just saying, what disease, man? What are you talking about? Are you sick? You mean, you mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bone. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. Hey, Jared. They all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Joker is great. 
Joker is great. His performance is great. All right, let's go around and say hey to everybody. We can probably learn more stuff now. If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. Presley? Are you even more racist than Ashley? Uh, spoiler alert, Presley is even more racist than Ashley. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, ma'am, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. Nihilus was fine! Objection! Objection! Nihilus was fine! Nihilus got killed by his friend! Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. Okay. I tell you what, Presley. Let's make a deal. I'll take you out in the field, give you a gun, and have you hack a rogue AI that's trying to kill us. And if you do it faster than Tally, we'll tell Tally to fuck off. No? Okay. Um, how about this? I'll take you out in the field, give you a shotgun, and have 25 husks charge at you. And if you kill them faster than Rex, we'll tell Rex to fuck off. No? Hmm. Okay, last choice. You and me go up to my chambers, and you give me a good hard pounding. And if you do it better than Garrus, I'll tell Garrus to fuck off. Now, I see you're interested in that offer, but I don't think you can live up to it. So... Shut the fuck up, Presley! Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander, this won't be a problem. <laughs> Boxy is constantly impressed by Ashley's willingness to bitch about aliens while sharing a room with Rex and Garrus, and right near the engine room where Adams is losing his shit about how great Tally is. She does not read the room. She really doesn't read the room. Like, at least Presley is on the bridge, and there are very few, if any, non-humans on the bridge, but... Whatever. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. I get Paragon points for not being racist. Hooray. Replenish my Medigel. Hey, Doc. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Doesn't look like there's anything new here. Nothing in here. Do, do, do. Let's go say hey to Caden. Hey, Caden. Or if you prefer, Hayden. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. Well, fine then. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Bugsy, that sounds bad, but I don't remember how. So, I will have to remember to have the right grenades when I go to Pharos. Ooh, there's a sleeper pod, and I can examine that. Get some XP and a codex entry. Doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Let's go downstairs, make sure everyone's got stuff. Oh! And the wrong grenades are the ones that kill people and give you renegade. Yeah, yeah. 
Sounds like a problem. Sadly, no cute little dialogue scene when it's just Shepard in the elevator. Anyway, hi, Garrus. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. Garrus. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. Garrus. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. Garrus people have rights, even if they're drug dealers. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. That kind of depends, G-Man. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid, unromanceable in Mass Effect 1, Turian. Hi, Ashley. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, ma'am. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. Cannot romance Garrus in Mass Effect 1. I will now list every romanceable character in Mass Effect 1. Liara. Whichever one of Caden and Ashley has different body parts than you. End of list. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. They have flashlight heads, ma'am. <laughs> I'll make sure it doesn't come again. to cheer Ashley up and she's like they're, <laughs> they're perfect assassins they're silent they're stealthy they don't even breathe they have flashlight heads <laughs> oh my god do you have a few minutes to talk one on one I'm sorry commander I need to get my duty squared away I wouldn't mind talking more later though dismissed chief Ma'am. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Hi, Rex. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Kinda do. Go yeah. ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. <laughs> that, yeah. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. 
So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? Rex has a point. An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? Rex has a point. And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Like, the genophage is... The genophage is so... Like, just on paper, it sounds awful, and then you think about it, and it's like... If a Krogan woman gets pregnant, she has to carry the baby to term just for the opportunity to roll on that awful table. You know, roll a D1000 on a 1 through 5, you have a baby. That's just... Mmm. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand. But don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Rex has a very defeatist attitude right now. So long, Rex. Which, I mean... One, same, and two, you can kind of see where he's coming from. The Krogan are in a shitty position right now. And throughout the entire trilogy, really. Hi, Tally. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Well, this one's fancy. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. Stupid heterosexual tally only romanceable for male shepherds. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. 
little known fact, one of the um, most important quarian ships is actually the HMS Theseus. It's a nice boat. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Thanks for hopping in, Jer. Go ahead and hit exclamation point lurk if you want to make your lurking nightbot official. It, it gives a command. Uh, but thank you for watching. Hit the button. Enjoy the stream. Do your dishes. Charge your computer. That's your government. Enjoy. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. I was going to say that because the Admiralty Board can overrule the Conclave, the only thing stopping the Quarian Flotilla from being a dictatorship run by five people is good faith and unicorn farts. But... The clause about the board having to resign once they override the Conclave is so brilliant. It's fucking genius. Can the Quarian Flotilla please run actual Earth? That would be nice. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, you're bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. 
Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. I'm pretty sure this is all either retconned or revealed to not be true in future games because I think it like directly contradicts a lot of stuff that we're going to learn from a future crewmate that doesn't make any sense I'm probably oversimplifying the Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations all you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers as we built more and more Geth their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Does this unit have a soul? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us. So we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Hmm. That, uh... It, 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 it's very interesting to respond to the realization, oh my god, these things are basically people, with... Kill them all. Hey, you can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, exile searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? That doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to be like, you know, Jimmy the Quarry and turning up to, to the flotilla being like, Guys! Guys! I found human breath mint snacks. They refresh your breath and... They're mildly tasty. It's like... Nobody wants to be Jimmy the Tic Tac Corian. So, I understand. 
I want to talk about something else. Like what? Nothing. I should go. See you later. Anyway, Engineer Adams, you're not a crewmate, so you probably have less to say. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian, Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. You know the one who's, who's four feet away from you? I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for Tally, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Talk up Tally? Flirt with Tally? Be annoyed at Tally deciding that she's in trouble? Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself, no emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented, more than a few hours silent running and they overheat, cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up, anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day, but you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster-than-light travel? Cranking up the FTL blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. <laughs> Just no selling minion enemies. That's great. One, one thing that I like, and that I, I might show off at some point, just buzzing through the codexes, codices, codex entries, is, you know, they'll mention just, you know, once in a while a ship named, like, the Tokyo will come up in a throwaway line of conversation, and you would think that maybe that's just something that that writer came up with at that moment. No, there's a theme there. You know, if there's a cruiser named the Tokyo, that means that the Alliance names their cruisers after human cities. So there's a cruiser called the London, there's a cruiser called the New York, there's a cruiser called the Helsinki, and so on and so forth. They put, and it's the same with, with the other classes of ship, they all have different themes to the names. I think there's a class where all of the ships are named after mountains on Earth, like, you know, there's the Everest, the Kilimanjaro, etc., etc., it's just such a neat little touch like that. It really shows, like, so much thought was put into this world, into things that nobody would ever see if... Nobody would ever see or think about if there wasn't the Codex. No, but that very, very, very few people would see or think about even if there is. It's just... This game is so good! Mass Effect is so good! I don't know how many times I can say it. I've run out of ways to say it, so I'm just gonna repeat it. Mass Effect is cool and good. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Take some codex entries and a bunch of XP, thank you very much. That is not surprising, because Patrick Weeks makes things that are cool and good. You there. I have a pittance of money. Sell me things. Looking for supplies? 
How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased. But I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. Yep, dreadnoughts are the one I was talking about, where every ship is a mountain. Which, which makes sense, because dreadnoughts are fucking enormous. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Alright, so... Actually, you know what? Before I go buying stuff, I'm gonna equip everybody with the best stuff imaginable and then sell all my junk. So, uh, Shepard is fully stocked, I think. Shepard's locker is not on this level, which is actually kind of annoying. Uh, let's equip Rex. Okay. Your assault rifle's fine. Uh, your pistol's fine. You've got... Yeah. I think this Reaper sniper rifle is probably crap, too. But, let's see. Okay. Equip Garrus. Yep, your assault rifle's fine. Your pistol, you have the same pistol. Uh, actually, the Reaper 2 is better than what you have. And you actually are going to use a sniper rifle, so you should have a good one. Looks like the Hammer 1 is going to be crap. Okay. Caden, uh, you... Uh, you don't use medium armor, right? Ashley uses medium armor. Uh, and Ashley doesn't want the survivor armor because it's not good. So, have that. That'll be junk. Make sure Tally has everything she can have. Okay, yeah, this Kessler pistol is crap. Okay. Now, in the upgrades... Can I... I can mark these things. Okay. Uh, phasic rounds 2, shield bypass. 25% shield bypass, but minus 30% damage? That's not good. Uh, armor piercing rounds one I'll keep it for now I only have so many upgrades yeah like themes continue throughout clusters and systems as well like there will be for instance there will be a system where you know the first star like the planets are all named after scientists for instance so there will be you know the first planet in the system is galileo and the next one is einstein and then you can actually land on hawking or something for instance i don't know if that particular one is actually true but like there are themes like that all throughout everywhere and we'll see a bunch of those yeah the system that eden prime is in that's a good example Okay. Uh, I think I just accidentally gave Kitali an upgrade for her pistol, but whatever. She uses it. Okay. Uh, let's sell all the crap and then buy new crap. Looking for supplies? Sell all the crap and then buy new let's crap. Let's see what you've got. Sell all the crap bet, and then Commander. we'll buy some new crap. Uh, sell all junk. Yes. I have a, an awful lot of, uh, let's see, uh, these motorized joints, they're crap. Uh, stimulant pack 2, 7% cooldown reduction. Yeah. What do the shock absorbers do? Plus 15%. Let's just sell that. Uh, hardened weave. What does the hardened weave do? Plus 11% hardening. Helpful. Uh, and the armor plating is actually damage protection, so I might want to. I might want to. Uh, 
Looking for supplies? Equip that is what I was looking for. Let's see what you got. You bet, Commander. Okay, so I have 5,700 credits. The most expensive things are 300,000 credits, so this is going to be an issue. 6125. So I can actually buy a Kessler 3 pistol, which is not any good. I can buy fancy armor for Rex. Uh, maybe the Kessler 3 pistol is good? I don't think so. It doesn't look good. It's less damage than the yeah, like why would I have? Why would I want the Kessler three instead of the Edge two? The Edge is one twenty four point five fifty seven. The Kessler is oh, the Kessler is marginally more accurate, but it's also like significantly more expensive. Seems silly. Uh, yeah, Shepard does not use an Omni tool because Shepard is a vanguard. Shep uh, Vanguards will have a biotic implant. Uh, I wish I could compare other crewmates' armor. Like, I wish I could compare, like, with this heavy Krogan armor that I have here, I wish I could just compare, like, what is Rex wearing right now? But no. That would be too easy. I would have to memorize these things or just... Yeah, let's just... Let us trust that the game will provide. I'm playing on normal for crying out loud. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. This right here is the galaxy map. The game's gonna make a fairly big deal out of this, as it should. So, we are at the Citadel. Uh, supposedly constructed by the long extinct Protheans. I don't know why it says supposedly. This is, you know, just true. Uh, Colossal Deep Space Station serves as the capital of the council. Uh, simulated gravity, 1.02 standard Gs. 13 million people, not including the keepers, live on the Citadel. It weighs 7 billion tons. That's a lot. You can also zoom out and you can see the system you're in. Uh, this is the Widow system. The only thing in the Widow system is the Citadel. There's just this star here, all alone. That's why they call it the Widow. In the Serpent Nebula, which is the cluster we're in, there is one system, the Widow system. But if you zoom out even further, here we are on the galaxy. Here is the Milky Way. These are some of the systems, the, the plot-relevant systems right now. There's the Horsehead Nebula, which is Novaria. That's a place we can go. Uh, Asteroid X-57 is a place we can go. We can not pause from right here. If we zoom out from the galaxy map, it just takes us back to the ship. So we can look at our journal and figure out where we actually want to go. So we have three, like, there are three main quests that we can do in order to advance the main plot. And we have to do all of these. Like, you have to do all of the missions. Uh, you don't have to do all of the assignments. So the missions are find Liara to Sony. She's in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Uh, figure out why the Geth are on Novaria. And figure out why the Geth are on Pharos. So find Liara, go to Novaria, go to Pharos. Those are the three missions. Anything else you see marked on the galaxy map is just an assignment. And some of the assignments are, you know, like, go to the Argus Row cluster, find the Hydra system. You know, something's going on there. So I think what we're going to do is just go out onto the galaxy map and kind of pick one sort of at random. So again, the Citadel is in the Widow System, which is in the Serpent Nebula, which is in the Milky Way. And you can poke around pretty much anywhere you like on the Milky Way. Uh, some clusters that are here, uh, that are here now, you can't go to. Like, for instance, and this is just a spoiler alert for future editions, the local cluster, the Soul System, you know, fucking Earth, is somewhere around here. 
and you can't go there right now. You can go there in later games. I don't think you can go here in the original Mass Effect 1 at any point, but maybe. But yeah, uh, so they've got three things, four things flagged here. One is Pharos, the main plot, Liara's dig site, the main plot, Novaria. Let's go to, uh, let's pick, oh, I don't know. Let's go to the Hawking Eta. Just poop in, pop in there. Then if you go to the Century Cluster, or the Century System, you zoom in there, and you get a neat little cutscene. Because you're leaving the Citadel. This doesn't happen every time, but when you leave the Citadel, you do get a little goodbye, you're leaving the Citadel type of cutscene. Message coming in, Commander. Big surprise, the Alliance needs you again. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett with Alliance Command. We've got a mission for you. An Alliance officer named Major Kyle has set up a small compound in the Hulking Eta Cluster. He's attracted a number of followers, mostly biotics. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, Shepard. Hello, Cookie Jair. You are back. You have switched accounts back to Cookie Jair. Good to see you. Uh, Admiral Hackett, could you possibly be overreacting? What kind of proof do you have that the Major is dangerous? Three days ago, we sent two Alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. Okay, that's fair. That compound is a cult, Shepard. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. That seems like a problem. You said his followers were biotics? Yes. Major Kyle never showed any biotic tendencies himself, though. I think he's just latched onto a group he identifies with. Hmm. Many biotics feel marginalized or ostracized by society. Kyle probably sees them as victims who need his protection, and they see him as someone who will fight for them. Unfortunately, he's convinced them that the Alliance is somehow responsible for all their problems. We can't let him go on like this. Kind of wish they had taken the time to fix all of the little typos in the game script, such as the space the spacing of that comma. Shame on you, Bioware. You know what? You know what? The beautiful thing about games as a service in the 21st century, in the 2020s even, you can patch that. Back on the PS3, well, I, I guess on the PS3 they could have updated it, but they weren't going to. But now? Now? Fucking patch that shit, Bioware. Fix that comma. Fix that comma. Fix the comma. What were those Alliance representatives going to talk to Major Kyle about? They wanted to bring him back to an Alliance facility for treatment. Major Kyle served us faithfully for many years. We weren't going to abandon him. Given his state of mind, however, he probably saw them as a threat. We're almost certain he had his followers killed him. What else can you tell me about Major Kyle? He used to be a model soldier. But something happened to him at Torfin. Too many Alliance soldiers <laughs> died under his command. He buzz. Couldn't cope with the guilt. His psych evaluations showed he couldn't handle the stress of command anymore. He was given an honorable discharge in early retirement. We'd hoped he would get better in time, but we underestimated how far gone he was. Now it looks like it's too late. I might be able to end this without violence. That may not be possible, Commander. We don't want a bloodbath, but Kyle is dangerous. I'll trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. 